A pleasant day to you all. I am Sir Christian and today me and my fellow math teachers will be teaching you all about simple interest. But before that, let us first understand its definition. Sir Anton, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sir Christian. Now, what is interest? Interest is a fee paid for borrowing money or other assets. Now, there are two types of interest. Simple interest and compound interest. Simple interest is the method of calculating the interest amount for a particular principal amount of money at some rate of interest. In the financial world, simple interest can be found in many places. You might encounter it when taking out a personal loan, borrowing money to buy a car, or setting up a bank account. The other type of interest you're likely to come across is compound interest. But for now, we will be focusing on the simple interest. Isn't that right, Sir Gian? Precisely, Sir Ant. Now that we know that simple interest is a quick and easy method of calculating the interest charge on a loan, let's get to know some of its important words. First, we have is the lender or creditor. The words lender and creditor both refer to an entity such as a bank that supplies money as a loan in exchange for loan interest. The difference is that a creditor is a lender that is entitled to receive a payment from a borrower. The lender can be a business organization or individual. Basically, any entity that loans a business money or assets is considered a creditor. For example, when a company takes out a loan from a bank, the bank is its creditor. If the company has no debt, it has no creditors, but the bank is still a lender in its own right. The second word would be the borrower or the debtor. A borrower and a debtor are nearly interchangeable terms. A borrower is in debt to a lender or financial institution when they borrow money. They usually complete applications and have legal obligations when borrowing money. In other words, if you take out a loan, you have a contractual obligation to pay it back. A debtor is a person or business that owes money to another person or business and if you're a debtor, you are indebted to someone else. Sometimes, a debtor refers to someone who files for bankruptcy. The third word would be origin or loan date. It is the date on which money is received by the borrower. Fourth, the repayment date or maturity date. It refers to the date on which a borrower's final loan payment is due. Once that payment is made and all repayment terms have been met, the promissory note that is record of the original debt is retired. In the case of a secured loan, the lender no longer has a claim to any of the borrower's assets. Time or term. This is the period from the beginning when the money was borrowed to the period that when the money should be returned with the additional amount or interest. This can also be called a term or deadline. This should properly and strictly be observed, especially in huge amount of loans. The time is denoted by a small letter T. The fifth term would be principal or present value. This is the amount of money being borrowed. This could be loaned from a bank or any loaning establishment or borrowed from a person. This will be the basis of how much we will be paid with the additional compensation for borrowing also in simple interest. The principal amount is always the same. Unlike compound interest, where we add the interest of previous years, principal to calculate the interest of the next year. Principal is normally represented by a capital letter P. The next term will be rate of interest or simple rate. This is the percent to be used to calculate the additional amount to be paid along with the principal. Common rates of interest ranges from 1 to 10 percent, but it can also be higher depending on the agreement between the parties. The rate is denoted by a smaller letter quote unquote R. In interest, like Sir Anton said, interest is the amount paid by someone who borrows a certain amount of money. This term is commonly used in banks, loans, installments, and investments. It is associated with percent rate 
and the length of time for which the amount of money is borrowed. Interest and normally presented by a letter, quote unquote, I. And lastly, maturity value or future value. It is the amount to be received on the due date or on the maturity of instrument or security that investor is holding over its period of time. The future value is denoted by a capital letter F. And now that we understand about simple interest and its terms, get your calculators ready and let us move on to the most awaited part, which is learning on how to solve them. In solving a math problem, it is essential to know which formula is suitable to be used. For this topic, we are going to be using these formulas. We are going to solve them through word problems or problem solving. For the first equation, we have is the simple interest formula, which is denoted by the letters I, S is equal to PRT where I is the total interest received, which what we are looking for. P is the principal, R is the rate of interest, and T is for the time. Let us look at these examples to understand more. For problem number one, a total of 20,000 pesos is invested at a simple interest rate of 3% for two years. How much is earned on this investment? So we will have the given principle which 20,000 pesos in the total amount of money is invested. Then, an important reminder about rate. So like it was explained, the rate is expressed by percent. So what will you do that you must change the percent into decimal? Never use the percentage. Now you might be wondering, Sir, how do we change a rate percentage into a decimal? Well. You just simply divide the rate percentage given by 100 and always 100 because that will be the constant number in dividing our rate percentage. Like in our given here, rate is equals 3%. So 3 divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.03. And that will be the rate of interest that's going to be used in application to this formula. Oh, I almost forgot about our last given which is the number of years which is the time the given time is two years now that we have our given we can proceed in multiplying them 20,000 pesos times the rate 0 0.03 times 2 so you may put input in your calculator and the result would be our sample interest 1,200 pesos problem number two a business takes out a simple interest loan of 300,000 pesos at a rate of 6.5%. What is the total amount of the business will repay if the loan is for 7 years? Our given principal is 300,000 pesos. The rate would be 0.065% because remember, we must change it into a decimal. Then our number of years is 7. We then calculate 300,000 pesos times 0 0.065 times 7 is equals to our simple interest of 136,500 pesos. Problem number 3. Bernard deposits 10,000 pesos at a bank at an interest rate of 5.5% per year. How much interest will he earn at the end of 3 years? Let us look at our given. We have 10,000 pesos for our principal. 5.5 divided by 100 is equals to 0.055% of our rate. And 3 years of time. Multiply 10,000 pesos times 0.055 times 3 is equals to 1,600 pesos. Problem number 4. A person deposits 15,000 pesos in a bank account which pays 6% simple interest per year. Find the value of his interest deposit after 2 years and 4 months. We have the principal, 15,000 pesos, a rate of 0.06% and another important reminder. Before we can apply the formula, we will need to write the time of 4 months in terms of years. Since there are 12 months in a year, so you divide the given months 4 to 12, which is equal to 1 third. And then 2 and 1 third is an improper fraction. So, 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 equals to 7 and we have a fraction of 7 over 3 or 2.33 years for our time. 
Now we can solve for our interest. 15,000 pesos times 006 times 2.33, we have an answer of 2,097 pesos. For our last problem for simple interest, find the interest on a car loan of 8,500 pesos at 16% for 9 months. Given principal is 8,500 pesos, rate is 16%. Converted into 0.16% and a time given of 9 months which must be divided to the number of months in a year which is 12 and is equal to 0.75. Now we can solve for our simple interest. 8,500 pesos times 0.16 times 0.75 is equal to 1,020 pesos. And now that we are done about word problems, in simple interest, let us go to future values. Future is denoted by the capital letter F. The given formula for future value is principal plus the simple interest or principal plus the principal multiplied to the rate and time. And we also have our last way in solving the future value. Let us just assume that there is a question. What is the total value of the given? given in the simple interest problem. Solving that is connected to the future value. Problem number one, going back to the simple interest. Problem number two, we are given the principal of 300,000 and a simple interest of 1,200 pesos. Now we can get our future value by adding the principal and simple interest and we can get the total value of 301,200 pesos. Problem number two, Going back to the simple interest problem number 3, the principal is 10,000 pesos and the simple interest is 1,650 pesos. We can now get the answer by adding the principal and simple interest which give us an answer of 11,650 pesos. Next will be problem number 3 in future value and we are going to be using the given in simple interest number 4. 15,000 pesos for the principal and 2,097 pesos for the simple interest. 15,000 pesos plus 2,097 pesos is equal to 17,097 pesos. For our fourth problem, using the given of the simple interest in number 5, 8,500 pesos plus 1,020 pesos. We added the principal and simple interest which will give us an answer of 9,520 pesos. And for our last number with a separate problem, Shane has deposited 1,300 pesos in an account paying 10% simple interest for 2 years. Determine the future value, we are going to be using the second formula for future value which is principal plus principal times rate times time. Our principal given is 1,300 pesos, then our rate is 10%, and remember, we must change into a decimal. So it turns into 0.1% in a given time of 2 years. 1,300 pesos plus 1,300 times 0.1 times 2. The future value would be 1,560 pesos. Moving on to the third formula, principal. The formula for principal is simple interest divided by rate multiplied to time. It is denoted by the capital letter P. For our first problem, we have Allied Bank Loan Checkpoint Industries money at 8% for one year. If the amount of interest was 4,000 pesos, find the amount of principal borrowed. We have 4,000 for our simple interest, 0.08% for rate and 1 year for time. Let us calculate. 4,000 over or divided by 0.08 times 1 is equal to 50,000 pesos. Second problem, an investment earned 3,300 pesos interest after 9 months. The rate was 5%. What was the principal? We have the simple interest of 3,300, a rate of 0.05% 0 
and a time of 9 months change into 0 0.75 because remember that months is divided to 12. Now, 3,300 pesos divided by the rate of 0.05% times the time 0.75. We will get an answer of 88 pesos. Problem number 3. Find the principal invested at 4% for 3 years and 2 months if the interest is 21,000 pesos. Our simple interest given is 21,000 pesos, 0.04% for the rate and a time of 3 years and 2 months which is changed into 3.17 years. Now we solve 21,000 pesos divided by 0.04 times 3.17 is equal to 1,656,015 pesos, 142 centavos. Problem number 4. Abrian wants to earn 1 million pesos in 10 years. What amount should she invest in the bank if the interest rate is 2.5%? We are given a simple interest of 1 million pesos, 0.025% rate, and 10 years of time. Calculate the principal. 1 million pesos divided by 0.0. 25 times 10 is equal to 4 million pesos. And lastly, problem number 5. How much money would Mary have initially borrowed if she accumulated 857 pesos in simple interest after 5 months with an interest rate of 6.2%? Our simple interest would be 857 pesos. The rate of 0.062% and 0.42 years in time. Use the calculator to input the following. 857 divided by 0.062 times 0.42 is equals to 32,910 and 91 centavos. Moving on to time. The formula given for time is simple. Interest divided by the principal times rate. The denoted letter for time is a small letter T. Word problem number one. A loan of 25,000 pesos had 20,000 pesos in interest. The rate was 10%. What was the length of the loan? The given principal is 25,000 pesos. The simple interest is 20,000 pesos and the rate of 0.1%. Solving for time. 20,000 pesos divided by the principal 25,000 pesos times 0.1. The answer for time would be 8 years. Number 2. Johnny bought 15,000 pesos from a bank to buy a ring with an investment rate of 12%. 9,000 pesos as interest while clearing the loan. Find the time for which the loan was given. We have the principal of 15,000 pesos, 9,000 pesos of interest, and 0.12% of rate. Calculate 9,000 pesos over 15,000 pesos times 0.12 is equal to 5 years of time. Problem number 3. The man invested 40,000 pesos at a simple interest rate of 14%. For how long must he invest it to earn at least 20,000 in interest? We are given 40,000 pesos for principal, 20,000 for interest, and 0.14 for rate. Now, 20,000 pesos over 40,000 times 0.14 will give us a time of 3.57 years. Therefore, our problem at what time of loan of 6,500 pesos generates a simple interest of 1,300 pesos at the rate of 2.5%. So, 6,500 pesos is our principal, then 1,300 pesos is our simple interest rate. And rate of 2.5 divided by 100 is equivalent to 0.25%. 1,300 pesos divided by 6,500 times 0 0.025 is equal to the time, which is 8 years. And for our fifth world problem, 
For time, it is 10,000 pesos is invested at 4.5% interest rate. How long will it take to grow 1,800 pesos? We are given 10,000 for principal and 1,800 for the interest and a rate of 0.045%. We then calculate this 1,800 pesos over 10,000 times, 0.045%. We have the given answer of time, which is 4 years. Next, we have here is the problem, solving in rate. The formula used for rate is simple interest divided by the principal times its time. The denoted letter for rate is the smaller letter R. Let us look at these examples. Problem number 1. Dubai, the newest released video game for the upcoming year. You get a summer job at a fast food restaurant. Suppose you save 4,200 pesos and deposit it into an account that earns simple interest after 9 months. The balance is 4,263 pesos. What is the rate? We have the given simple interest of 4,200 pesos. The principal is 4,263 pesos and a time of 9 months divided by 12 equals to 0 0.75. We then substitute 4,200 pesos divided by 4,253 pesos times 0 0.75 will give us the answer 0 0.0131. So as what we have discussed, when you solve for the value of rate, the answer must be in decimal. If you can recall its definition, that rate is usually expressed in percent. How to change a decimal number into percent? Just simply multiply it by 100. The decimal number here is multiplied by 100 and you will get an answer of 0.31%. Never forget to put the percentage symbol. Problem number 2. K earned 8,000 pesos in interest. She originally deposited 14,800 pesos in the account and left it there for 18 years. What was the simple interest rate that she earned? We have the simple interest of 8,000 pesos, a principal of 14,800 pesos and 18 years of time. Substitute 8,000 pesos divided by 14,800 times 18 is equal to the rate 0.03 or 3%. Number 3. Word Problem Rate The woman took a loan of 24,000 pesos with simple interest for 6 years. If she paid 4,000 pesos as interest at the end of the loan period, what was the rate of interest? 4,000 pesos given for simple interest, 24,000 for principal and 6 years for time. So, 4,000 pesos divided by 24,000 times 6 is equal to 0.03 or 3%. Problem number 4. Ronald received 6,250 pesos of loan from a bank after 3 months. He paid back 6,265 pesos and closed the loan. Find the rate of interest. We have the given 6,250 pesos for simple interest, 6,265 of principal at a time of 3 months, divided by 12, equivalents to 0 0.25. Calculate the rate 6,250 pesos divided by 6,265 times. 0.25 is equal to 0.399 or 3.99%. And for our last world problem, 45,000 pesos is deposited into a savings account. After 8 years and 2 months, it is total to 52,500 pesos. Calculate the simple interest for this account. So we have a that given simple interest of 45,000 pesos, a principal of 52,500 pesos, and a time of 5 years and 2 months. Now we must divide the 2 months by 12 and we will get a fraction of 1 sixth 
then we do this improper fraction 6 times 5 is equal to 30 plus 1. We will get the answer of 31 over 6 or 5.17%. Now we can solve for the rate. 45,000 pesos divided by 52,000 times 5.27 and we will get an answer of 0.17 or 17%. Well, that was a lot of problems, but solving them gave us more knowledge on different ways in finding a solution. And plus, that is how life works. Students, when there is a problem, we must find a solution. That really hit us in the spot, Sir Carl. Anyways, don't exit this video yet as we solve for our next simple interest problem. In this, we are going to be solving for the missing quantities in each row. So stay tuned as we solve it together. As you can see, we have a table with some rows missing in them. And because of that, we must solve for the missing row. For the first row, we have principal and future value missing. For us to know their value, we must take a look at the given. We have 1 million pesos as our principal, with a rate of 11.5%. So always remember, do divide it by 100 for it to become a decimal. Now, we have a rate of 0.115% and a time of 8.17 years, because remember, in time, months is divided by 12. We can now solve for the simple interest. 1 million pesos times 0.115 times 8.17 is equal to 9,395.50 cents. Let us solve for the future value. Principal plus the simple interest, so 1 million pesos plus 9,395.50 cents is equal to 1,900,000. 39,550 For the second row, we have a missing rate and the future value and we have a given principle of 29,000 pesos 0.5 for months and a simple interest of 9,260 pesos Solving for our rate Simple interest divided by the principal times time 9,260 pesos divided by 29,000 pesos times 0.5 is equals to 0.64 or 64%. Next, we have to solve for the future value. 29,000 pesos plus 9,260 is equals to 38,260 pesos. Going to the third room, we will be looking for the principles and the future value. Given the rate of 0.035%, a time of 2 years, and a simple interest of 1,300 pesos, let us calculate its principal, simple interest divided by rate times time. So, 1,300 pesos divided by 0.035 times 2 is equal to 18,571.43 cents. Now, for our future value, 18,571 and 43 plus 1,300 is equal to 19,871 and 43 cents. The fourth row has a missing of simple interest and future value. Given 65,250 pesos principal, rate of 4% divided by 100 is equal to 0.04%. For the rate and 3 months divided by 12 is equal to 0 0.25. Now the principal is 65,250 pesos times the rate of 0 0.04 times the time of 0 0.25 is equal to 652 pesos and 5 cents. Now, let us find the future value. 65,250 pesos plus 652 pesos and 5 cents is equal to 65,902 pesos and 5 cents. And for the last row to be solved has the missing time and future value. Given the principle of 12,000 pesos, a rate of 0.02% and a simple interest of 1,200 pesos. 
Now the formula for time is simple. Interest divided by principal times rate. Substitute 1,200 pesos divided by 12,000 pesos times 0.02 is equal to a time of 5 years. Now, we can solve for our future value 12,000 pesos plus 1,200 pesos is equal to 13,200 pesos. You have finally made it at the end of our presentation. Did you learn a lot? I am sure they have, Sir Christian, for we have taught them a lot about simple interest and different ways in solving them. It was sure it was a lot, but practice makes perfect, so we know that you can do it. Always remember that simple interest is an application of percentage. Understanding the concept of simple interest is not only important for you to know how to solve problems in classes. Also, it's a fundamental skill to help you manage your finances. With the basic knowledge on how you get the concept work, you get empowered to make good financial decisions. Precisely, Sir Carl. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that you will always have a great day. Goodbye.